my thought is to always attract people who bring skills and experience about every aspect necessary to grow a business. This is Jana from Bow Wow Labs. Hi, this is Jake with Rinse Ruin. Hey, it's Brian and Michael Special of The Comfy, the sensation you saw on Shark Tank. And you're listening to... You're listening to... You are listening to The, the Ecom, Ecom Show. Show. Welcome to The Ecom Show, presented by Blue Tusker, the number one place to hear the inside scoop from other e-commerce experts where they share their secrets on how they scaled their business and are now living the dream. Now, here is your host, Andrew Mass. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Ecom Show. I'm your host, Andrew Maff, and I'm here today with John Adebro and Michael London of Bow Wow Labs. Thank you guys so much for have, uh, joining me today. You guys ready for a good show? Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Perfect. Great. Obviously, really appreciative of you guys being on the show with me today. I'm super excited about this one because I love talking about pets and the pet industry is very interesting to me. I've been in and out of it before, so it's always kind of intricate to see what's going on there. But let's let's do the typical pretend no one knows who you guys are. And why don't you guys tell me a little bit about Bow Wow Labs and, of course, about yourselves as well. All right. Well, why don't we give you a little background first, Andrew? Uh, so I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've been building companies since I was a kid. Uh, I knew this is what I wanted to do in life. I never wanted a boss. Uh, I've been lucky and built three big companies. My, uh, uh, my first one was HQ, the office space leasing company that's now a $3 billion business. Uh, my second was a retail catalog manufacturing company that we took public. And the third company, carclub.com, pioneered the whole concept of helping people buy cars. We help people buy about $5 billion worth of cars. And along the way, I've evolved uh, into what I call a venture capital incubator. And by that, I mean, I help entrepreneurs and small companies take big ideas uh, where they don't have the team and the capital and the experience. uh, And I take it and I run with it. I build my companies to sell them. Uh, I have a very uh, deep set of boxes that have to get checked before I'm interested. I won't share all of them with you, but the three biggest ones are it's got to be a big idea in a big market and solve a big problem, which means there's always something disruptive about it. Because if it's not a disruptive idea, there's already the big guys there. And I don't want to fight the Googles of the world. I want to partner with them and sell them my companies. The second is it's got to deliver real value. And what I mean by that, it's not something that's faddish. It's not something that uh, uh, it's just dependent on a clever copywriter. Uh, It's got to have a real fundamental problem that it's solving. But then the most important, and this is just me, it's got to be what I call a cookie cutter hockey stick. It's got to be a business that once you figure out the formula, it has the ability to scale explosively because I'm not interested in building $10 million companies or taking 10 years to do it. And once I get an idea, once somebody brings something to me, and it's usually an entrepreneur or a small company, I do my due diligence. uh, uh, I build a team. Uh, We do a financial plan, we do a business plan, and then most importantly, we do a proof of concept. The proof of concept for this idea was a Kickstarter campaign. And out of 600 pet industry campaigns over the last decade leading up to to the summer of 2018, we came in a top 10. We used that as a springboard to launch the company. Uh, Two months later, we did a whopping $5,000 that first month. Uh, we had 28 straight months of consecutive month over month growth, and we broke 500,000 for the first time in January of 2021. Um, and I'm going to let Jonna tell you a little bit about her background, and then I'm going to tell you how we got started, uh, how this idea came to us, and how it evolved from the original idea uh, into what it is today. Right. So um, Michael's the heavyweight. <laughs> if you <laughs> that up. I am um, I'm a clinical pet nutritionist um, specializing in canines and, and felines. I'm also I've been an herbalist for like 20 plus years. I also own um, a holistic pet boutique and supply store in Rhode Island. Um, and most importantly, I'm a dog mom and I've been passionate about pets since I was a young girl and I never you know, I, I was not the person that was able to be a veterinarian because the thought of blood and the thought of having to put an animal to sleep <laughs> literally just 
turned my stomach. You know, as an adult now, you look back and you realize there's quality of life issues. So it's not as bad as I thought when I was a child, but it just wasn't the way that that my life path was going to take me. So when I realized that there was um, a career where I could be a nutritionist and then I could actually join a company like Bow Wow Labs and, you know, share my knowledge and um, educate pet parents as to how they can help extend their pets' lives, how they can make them happier, how they can make them safer, how they can bring them to optimal health. You know, I feel it sounds really hokey, but my heart became full. So um, it's been a really great journey for me. And I'm just a really, I'm, I'm a very um, blessed to be a part of Bow Wow Labs and, and on their journey with them. Nice. So uh, this idea came to me uh, uh, through uh, my banker's son. Uh, my wife and I are founding shareholders in what is probably the most successful community bank in the United States. And uh, uh, the founder of the bank has been my banker and friend for 35 years. And he, he called me one day a couple of years ago and he said, Michael, would you talk to my son, Scott? He's got a great idea, uh, but uh, he, uh, he, he wants to go off to Tahoe and be a ski bum. Uh, and uh, so Scott uh, comes to me and tells me this story about his dog choking on a bully stick a couple of Christmases earlier. And uh, they rushed the dog to the vet. The dog saved the vet. A vet saved the dog. I always say it that way. I don't know. <laughs> uh, the vet saved the dog. A and um, as he was walking out the door, he says to the vet, what could I have done differently? The vet laughed and said, don't give him bully sticks. Uh, so he went home, looked on the Internet, and the only advice he could find was put the bully stick in a vice grip. Oh, P.S. Be careful. When the dog gets to the end of the stick, he can break his teeth on the vice grip. So to his credit, uh, they went out, he and his wife, and, and spent $50,000 on a first-rate design firm uh, and came up with the Bully Buddy, a little device to hold the bully stick and keep the dog from choking. That's what we <laughs> went to market with. And um, uh, in our research, over the six months leading up to the Kickstarter campaign, uh, we realized that there was a bigger idea than just simply selling bully buddies and bully sticks. There was an opportunity to really develop uh, uh, a, a business that was focused on keeping dogs safe and healthy, to bring products to market that truly, no BS, were addressing that need, uh, which is why Jonna is so important to our business, because her nutrition, her uh, herbalist, her, all of her skills, plus her knowledge from, from her retail store, allow her to evaluate products, allow, her, allow us to develop new products. Um, and so we went to market with the Little Bully Buddy one uh, for the Kickstarter campaign, had this great success. And, and then we launched the business in November. Uh, and as I said, we had 28 straight months of uh, 8 to 15% month over month uh, growth. We started out spending $500 a month, $500 a week, sorry, uh, on ad spend for Google and Facebook, et cetera. And uh, as we kept getting the results we wanted, we kept increasing it. Uh, and 28 months later, we were spending over $150,000 a month. But we also began to develop products. So that little bully buddy turned into a family of bully buddies. Here's the little guy for dogs under 15 pounds. And wait for the... Oh, wow. This big guy. <laughs> That's so wow. because people are listening to this, uh, the bully buddy, the second design is a bone shaped device. That's a safety device that has a screw on the end. And what happens is there's a center, there's a hole and that's where the bully stick goes. And then you screw down on that bully stick and it keeps the bully stick in place. So the dog can navigate it, put its paws on top. And what it allows them to do is basically enjoy all of the, the, the benefits of a long-term chew without getting to that last one inch nub, which is then a potential for a choking hazard or intestinal obstruction. So, so then we launched, um, then, we, then the question was, how could we extend beyond the bully sticks and the bully buddy? And our first uh, product was a, um, a, a little uh, treat called a, um, uh, a waggy like wafer. <laughs> and, and we followed that up with a second one called the crunch puff. Now, what those three treats offer is a short-term 
midterm and long-term chew. The waggy wafer mm-hmm. is an instant gratification. Mm-hmm. Your dog did something good. You want to make him happy. You give him a little waggy wafer. That comes in turkey, salmon, uh, or chicken flavors. The crunch puff actually takes a dog between five and 10 minutes. They suck on it. They run around, try to hide it because they don't want anybody to get it. <laughs> and, and then they eventually bite through and you get this unbelievable sound that brings a smile to everybody's face. This huge crunch. Okay, um, wait, full disclosure, Michael. If you have a big dog like I do, if you have an 88 pound dog, it's more about two minutes. Just for full disclosure, because when everyone goes out there and buys our crunch puffs, I don't want to get a bunch of emails that it's only taken two minutes, not 10. It depends on the size of the dog, but it is definitely a longer term treat. <laughs> And then you got the bully buddy, bully sticks, which last anywhere from, you know, 15 minutes to my, my, our little dog, our Havanese, uh, used to take a week to get through a, uh, a bully stick. He was about 14 yeah. pounds. So we have a whole host of other products we're launching. We're launching the <laughs> dental line before the end of the year. This is, uh, the bully buddies patented, um, everything we do, we're trying to, uh, develop IP around it to add value. Mm-hmm. Our dental line gets launched before the end of the year, which is a, um, uh, a patented toothbrush that brushes the, all of the dog's teeth in 10 seconds. <laughs> Top, bottom. <laughs> That's inside. awesome. Yeah. So it has, so it has <laughs> four heads. So there's three heads on one side, which actually encompass the teeth. And then you have on the opposing side, another head, which actually cleans the opposite tooth and helps to keep um, the jaw open. And it is, uh, it's an amazing veterinary approved patented product that is unlike anything on the market. Wow. And, and then we got a whole host of uh, li- literally a roadmap of products. We, we hope to introduce a product every 90 days. Uh, and the key is we're not going to sell cute clothes. It's all about keeping dogs truly uh, safe and healthy. Um, but, you know, um, this, the, the, key, the key to this business and every other business, because my businesses have all been different, B2B, B2C, different industries, uh, but there are similarities. Uh, I build platforms because the hard part in building a business is laying track those early stages. And if you're going to lay track, might as well lay track that can carry more than one product. And that's what you see on Shark Tank all the time when they go, you know, you don't have a company here. You have a product. So uh, my thought is to always attract people who bring skills and experience about every aspect necessary to grow a business. And I'm always a rookie. When I start out, because I don't want to do the same thing twice. Right. So I didn't know diddly about the, the pet business other than I had dogs. <laughs> right? uh, so I surrounded myself with very smart people like Jonna, who have mm-hmm. deep experience on everything from e-commerce, marketing, technology, um, uh, uh, supply chain, fulfillment and so forth. So we're a little company that punches way above our weight because of the talent and experience of the people we have. So you might say to yourself, well, how do you get those kind of people? Do you pay them a lot? And, and actually, it's just the opposite. I don't pay anybody in the beginning until we get out of the gate. And I do that because it's one of the boxes that have to get checked. If I can't attract a great team around the concept of the business in exchange for equity, options in the business, then it's not a big enough opportunity. Mm-hmm. And so... Once we launch, everybody starts getting paid. Nobody's, nobody's being paid full market. Uh, everybody's in this for the same end result, to build the company, to sell it, uh, and to make a lot of dogs and dog pet parents happy. It's an incredibly impressive background on, on both sides. What, so one of the first things I was thinking about is, so I've, I've helped in the pet industry several times before, and I know while it's a very fun industry, it's very difficult to differentiate yourself, especially on the consumable side. So it's, it's, I, obviously, uh, the main product makes a lot of sense. That's an innovation. But the treat side is difficult. How, what are you guys doing to kind of differentiate yourselves from the hundreds of thousands of other treats that are out there? So well, there's a little... Can I answer that? Okay, little, you go ahead. Be, I'm going to give one answer. <laughs> you give the real okay. answer. So there's a little... <laughs> It's a little piece of gold in every one of our treats. So you, just have to figure out, you buy a bag and look for the one that has the gold in it. No, no. Okay. okay. Go ahead, John. 
So in truth, you know, one of great the, sales pitch, <laughs> one of the better, right. It's like Willy Wonka a little bit, right. Just find the bar with the, with the gold ticket. Um, <laughs> one of the things that is uh, a benefit for me uh, being a part of this team and me having a retail store is that I see on a daily basis, what's in the marketplace currently, but I also see and hear from consumers what is missing from the marketplace. So what that does, being the boots on the ground for Wow Labs, allows me to go back to our um, R&D product development committee and kind of f- figure out how to fill those gaps, which is what the Crunch Puffs did. So the Crunch Puffs is a single ingredient beef treat that fills the void of crunching, which helps um, kind of brush the teeth and gives all of the benefits of oral health and is a longer term treat. So Technically, what we're doing is we're finding those voids, and that's going to be what um, differentiates us from all of the other companies that are out there. We just we don't want to be one more company that has one more of the same. That's not what we mm-hmm. want. We want to be innovative in every possible way and with every product that we bring to market that serves a purpose, right? And one of those purposes being that it helps the pet ha- be in optimal health. So it kind of has to check additional boxes as well. And what's different about the world today, the pet world, uh, in part because of COVID, is that um, our customers don't put their dogs out at night in the snow to sleep. They take them into their beds with them. Yeah. Okay. So, that, so, so what we're trying to do is be true to our mission, which is to keep dogs safe, healthy, and happy. Um, plus... One of the uh, things that I always do in my companies, and it, uh, we're really going to do it here, is uh, it, to augment explosive organic growth, uh, I make acquisitions, which triggers and accelerates that trajectory even more. I've mm-hmm. never seen a better space for acquisitions than this pet space because of what you just said, Andrew. It's a very crowded space. There are many, many companies, and there are... 14,000 pet companies in the United States today. It's a very tough space. That's why there's only generally really big boys and little guys, because the little guys can't get space. They can't get the capital. They don't have the experience. And we have already, we, if we had finished our Series A earlier, uh, we, I could have made six acquisitions already. Little companies with great little products that would have fit beautifully under our umbrella. So... You know, there's no magic. You know, people think, oh, wow, that's, you really got something, you know, magical. There isn't any magic. Mm-hmm. It's having a good product, having a good plan, executing the plan, getting enough capital. And, yeah, and those are four of the five ingredients for success. I, I taught entrepreneurship as a guest lecturer for three years during one of my three retirements. I, I don't do that very well. Uh, and, and, and it's you the last thing. You do well, right? It's the you're, last thing. You're a great professor, bad <laughs> retire. <laughs> it, it, it's the last ingredient that is only is the one that's most important. It's the mm-hmm. people. It's having the talent. It's having people who care about what they do. And in today's day and age, where people don't stay very long, they're in it for the money. They're in it to not work very hard. Um, it, it's very hard to find incredibly smart, dedicated, caring people who are good at what they do. That's, in my view, the most important ingredient. I don't care what your product is, what industry you're in. If you don't have the right people, your chances of success are very slim. I completely agree. The acquisition side is very interesting. So I I very rarely hear other sellers, especially in the e-commerce industry, have the the background and the knowledge to understand that if you want to move and you want to move fast, the quickest way to doing that is through acquisitions. So it's... Great to hear that you're doing that. I know you don't want to share the secret sauce, but what is what is the? Are you looking to expand the product line within the same category, or are you looking to acquire pet companies that you can just leverage that data and sell other products that are completely different from what you currently have? I want to paint a picture for you: the Roman Colosseum. The Roman Colosseum, lots mm-hmm. of doors. We want products that attract people in the door. And then once we get them in there, we want to keep them because we have all the other products there. So we, we are yeah. going to grow products three ways. We're going to invent them. That's our most favorite way to do it because now we have the IP. We own it. Uh, mm-hmm. We will acquire it. 
So if we find companies that have a product we don't make, that is, we think best of breed, that we can take and, and scale, that something that is of great interest. And then in some cases, it would have to be something very unique. We will white label something, somebody that has a product that is already there, but they just can't you know, make it as big as, as we will be able to make it. And my mm -hmm. approach to growing businesses and acquiring companies is a little different. Yes, we'll give them a little cash. But I think what entrepreneurs who have great little products want is if their business is not really where they uh, are at a point where they have enough wealth to, to retire, um, the best way for them to get that wealth is to uh, uh, put their product, their company into ours, take our stock, okay, and benefit from a much bigger engine. And I'll give you one example. In my last company, we were looking to buy a little company that had something we didn't have. And it was a great fit for us. And uh, he, he wanted $750,000 in cash. I didn't have $750,000 in cash. We were growing so fast, I needed all the cash we could grow, we, we could use. So I gave him a million dollars of the stock, and I convinced him that he would be better off. Eventually, he took it. And two and a half years later, he put $4 million in cash in his pocket. So that was a win-win all the way around. Oh, by the way. Yeah. That acquisition was a springboard to allow me to raise fifty million, so it was a win-win all the way around. So that is normally the way I would be approaching uh, making acquisitions, looking for companies where they've got a great product, it's ready to scale, but they don't have the money or the capital or the experience to really scale it. Mm -hmm. So who's running the day-to-day -day of the business right now? Well, right now uh, we have a very experienced. Uh, very talented woman, my wife. Um, Linda is a, a very, she's not there because she's my wife. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, she's a, a, a former IBM executive, one of the first women hired in sales for IBM, the second woman promoted to management, um, uh, had a stellar career until she had the unfortunate experience of running into me. Um, and. <laughs> But, but Linda was uh, the VP of marketing at the company we took public, and uh, uh, she quit IBM when we retired from the first company and went to live in Europe. Uh, it's another story. Uh, and then I coaxed her into this for a couple of years, but uh, she, she promised me two years. The two years are up. She keeps reminding me it's time to, for her to go back to the golf course. Uh, so we are actually, <laughs> actually recruiting. We're looking for a, a chief operating officer out of the pet space, e-commerce experience, really ready to sort of take us to the next level. But right now, the, the business is uh, uh, very horizontal. I mean, John is very influential in the in the day to day, as well as uh, uh, some of the other people on our team. You know, this is one of those companies, Andrew, where it, it, titles don't really mean anything, you know? It, yeah. If we had an office, everybody would stop to pick up the piece of paper and put it in the in the garbage, but right, but we, <laughs> the only garbage is on our own home floors. We've been virtual for almost eighteen months now. Yeah, you and your wife are uh, quite the power couple. That's that's impressive. Um, I'm I'm jealous. One day I'll get where you're at. Uh, so, Bow Wow Labs, where? How many different channels are you guys on? I know you have your own site. Uh, I believe you're on Chewy as well. Like, where else are you guys selling right now? We're in Amazon.com and Walmart.com. We are not on Chewy. Really? Why yeah. stay away from Chewy in we your market? Chewy. Really? They haven't. Have you? Well, they've been oh, after for a year. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it got escalated up. I, should, I probably shouldn't tell this story. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to. So it got elevated uh, uh, to, uh, to a very senior guy at Chewy. And I... Mm -hmm. I said to, the, to this fella, I said, I, is it okay if we make any money? <laughs> and, and he laughed and he said, you know, it's really valuable to be on Chewy's. I said, not if we can't make any money. <laughs> and that's the problem when you're a mouse and you dance with an elephant. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, would Chewy's be fantastic for us? Uh, absolutely. But we can't make it work for us at the margins that we've got. We, we, you know, we, uh, 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 we don't have the margins we will have when we're much, much bigger. 
So we have to do what we have to do. So, so as John has said, our two primary are Shopify and Amazon. We're on Walmart. We're looking at TikTok. We're looking at Pinterest. We're looking at all kinds of other channels. Uh, we also have a, uh, uh, this is a, a funny story. So when Jonna joined us, the first thing she did, she says, let me sell Bully Buddies in, uh, uh, in my store. And I said, no, no, we're not doing retail. She said, come on. I said, no. Well, you probably can tell she's a little persistent. <laughs> 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 she eventually wore me down and I said, fine, I'll give you a test. We'll send you 50 Bully Buddies. And... <laughs> and you know, let's see how it goes. So we sent her 50 bully buddies, about 10 days goes by and I call her on the phone and I go, so how'd you do? And she goes, what do you mean? I said, well, how'd you do with those 50 bully buddies? She said, well, what do you mean? I sold them the first weekend. I said, you sold 50 bully buddies in your store in one weekend. We're now, mind you, I have a 1200 square foot store in a tiny little town in Richmond, Rhode Island. So <laughs> I think I convinced him that it was time to move into the retail space. And, and, and we now have enough exposure that we're, we're, we get calls all the time from pet stores. Uh, hey, people are in here asking about the bully buddy and your sticks and stuff. Uh, how, do, how, do I, how do I get your products? So we have a, a couple of uh, salespeople now, uh, uh, and we have what we call our independent pet retailer program. There's 10,000 independent pet stores in the country. We hope to get into about 2,500 of them. Um, uh, over the next uh, uh, three to four years. Uh, and we also expect to be in the vet uh, when our toothbrush and our, our, and we didn't mention our toothpaste, Jonna actually invented uh, this, this toothpaste. Why don't you tell them about the toothpaste? Yeah, it's a toothpaste gel. It's, um, I think it's an amazing product, but I also formulated <laughs> it. So it is an enzymatic toothpaste gel that has uh, Manuka honey and sage in it. So the sage helps, um, it's actually the only herb that has been proven to help with gingivitis. So we have that in there as well as the glucose oxidase that's going to help to break down the biofilm that uh, happens on a daily basis. And it is just an amazing product that's unlike anything on the market. So I might be biased, but I've been <laughs> using it since the samples have been uh, finalized. And um, I actually even tried it on myself. I got to be honest with you, because technically that's in the world that I live in. It's if it's got to if it's going to go in another pet's mouth, it has to either be tested on mine and they have mm -hmm. to love it. And it has to be a quality that's good enough that I'm willing to give it to my dogs, who, by the way, are my children, like literally because I don't have two legged kids or in the case of toothpaste, it's got to go in my mouth. I will not put animal parts in my mouth just for clarification. <laughs> <laughs> I have my limits, um, but it's a great product that we already have veterinarians reaching out to us to see when we can get it into their uh, offices. So it's going to be a That's great amazing. addition. So, so you're, you're going re Sorry. Sorry so we, we went into retail um, at the worst possible time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we went into retail November, 2019, having absolutely no idea what 2020 was going to bring us and that it was going to yeah. bleed into 2021. Um, with that said, we're in about 125 stores right now, which says a lot for people that were, really hesitant to bring in new products because mm -hmm. so many people were not able to go in-person shopping. Um, and yeah, we scaled up. we now have uh, quite a few salespeople and um, we just continue to grow. So wow. I think listeners might be interested in the thought process that went into why, why the dental. Uh, so I'm going to give you some business uh, d uh, info and then Jonna can talk about the, the medical, the nutritional side. So it turns out that the dental uh, space is about $2 billion and, uh, a year, $2 billion, and growing at, uh, uh, what, uh, over 10%. Yes, yeah. yeah. 10 to 20% is the trajectory. Yeah. Morgan Stanley says that the pet space, uh, which is now about $120 billion, will be over $300 billion by the end of the decade. Think about that growth, okay? A lot of it is going to come through the dental uh, 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 because it goes through the dog's mouth. And the reason that is important is because the mouth is a source of so many problems for dogs. And on that, I'm going to turn it over to you, John. 
Yeah, there's an intimate relationship with the um, health of the mouth and the health, the overall health in the body. So the bacteria that's in the mouth can actually get into the bloodstream, get like the bacteria and actually go to distant organs. It's responsible for inflammation in the body. Um, gingivitis, heart issues, there's a direct correlation with heart health and dental health. So what we are seeing specifically in millennials is they are like me, they don't necessarily, not that I'm a millennial by any means, but um, <laughs> they don't necessarily, they're not having regular two-legged kids at the same age. So they are investing more of their time and more of their money into the health of their pets. And so vets are for the first time in the last probably five to 10 years, really pushing hard oral health because there is that direct correlation. And finally, it is getting out into the consumer audience and people are becoming more aware of how important it is. So we are really on the precipice of a movement where people are going to be taking more, the more active approach to the dog's health. It's no longer about opening a bag and pouring things to a bowl. We've learned now, you know, through unfortunately lots of sick dogs, that that is not the way that you take care of a dog. If you want them to be in optimal health and to live as long as possible and pet parents now more than ever are ready to take that active role and, um, start doing whatever they can. So. And the key, nice. the key was who wants to brush their dog's teeth and spend two minutes trying to keep the dog's mouth open. And, <laughs> right? So we, so with this patented toothbrush, we solved that problem with a really quick, really easy. And what this really does is, is now you don't take your dog to the vet for a $600, put your dog under the, uh, 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 right. Anesthesia. I mean, yeah. anesthesia, right. So this allows you, us to be uh, have a gateway for all a lot of other treat products that are coming that are all tied to dental dental chews you know there's a little company out there you probably heard of greenies mm -hmm. 200 plus million dollars we're coming <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are obviously growing like a weed, you're coming out with a ton of different stuff in, in your product line. How are you handling the current supply chain issues with all of the stuff coming down your pipeline? And then obviously with Q4 coming up and Michael, you're shaking your head, which means this is going to be a good answer. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Uh, yeah. well, you want to tell them the toothpaste tube story? <laughs> My nightmare that I've been living for the last few weeks. Um, so one of the reasons why our dental line is coming out at the end of Q4 rather than the end of Q3 is because we have been waiting for tubes and the mm -hmm. tubes have been, uh, well, they were going to be sent by air. They ended up being sent, uh, incorrectly by uh, a cargo ship. And oh. we received an email uh, at the end of last week, basically saying that there are 88 ships that span across 40 miles of sea off the LA port and brace yourselves because it's going to be about three to four months before they hit customs. And then you have to get through customs to which, you know, I had a call with Michael and I said, this is a no go. And we had to negotiate and redo things. And now we're getting them here in about three weeks because you know, you have to, you, when all is said and done, you still have to have your business mind about you and you have to try to be, you have to be able to pivot on a dime. Right. And so mm -hmm. when these challenges come your way, you have to find a different way to navigate and get around the problem, however that may be. Um, and so as far as I'm concerned, I feel like it's stretching us in a, a great way because it's also making us look uh, differently at our future products, making certain that we rely more on USA packaging, not just products, because that is obviously our, our driving force, but packaging printing, all of those elements. So um, it's really making us a better company. That's my optimistic take <laughs> on the whole well, thing. Because it, it, just means you, it, it just means you cannot simply make decisions based on the low cost supplier. There are right. now other realities, whether it be tariffs, shipping costs, shipping availability. Uh, how about this one? Bully sticks are the, you know, uh, still the primary uh, product we sell today. Well, in the middle of this COVID, Argentina shuts down the export of all meat products, including bully sticks. Well, guess what happened to the price of wholesale bully sticks overnight? They almost doubled. So, I mean, I the supply it. chain, I was in a, 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 a HEB supermarket looking for some, 
some uh, App Arnie Palmer last night, and th- there's none. And I happened to see the manager, and I said, "Where are you out?" He said, "Are you kidding? Look at all the empty shelves here." He said, "We we have so much stuff we can't get. It's it's unbelievable." And that's just a supermarket. Imagine a technical company. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we 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 bought a new car uh, earlier this year, uh, and I got a call from the dealer. Uh, uh, at the end of last week, offering me, you ready? A thousand dollar profit over what I paid nine months ago for a car that has 8,000 miles on it, used. He will buy it back for me right now and give me all my money back plus a thousand dollars because they have no cars. And I yeah. said, well, I said, well, okay, that's, uh, I said, what a great deal. I'll do that. I said, when can I order a 2022? He said, I don't know, maybe 2023. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, it's like the housing market. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, no, it's yeah. uh, it's really different, challenging. I mean, look, I've always believed that if you make money, if you're successful in building a business from from scratch. Um, it, you deserve whatever you got because it, it it's not an accident. You know, that's yeah. why you get that's why you get a lot of the investment community that has shied away from from early stage. Mm-hmm. You know, they're willing to pay more. It's part of it is because there's so much money, right? The funds have so much money. They can't afford to do million dollar deals anymore, or half a million dollar deals. They got to write bigger checks. But part of it is because they'd rather pay more and get a company that's further down the, down the road. Mm-hmm. So with all of the supply chain issues that you guys are having, which obviously a lot of stuff's going to be pushed back, how are you preparing for Q4? I always find that to be an interesting thing to consider because... Typically, you find, you know, sellers do the normal like Black Friday, Cyber Monday stuff and they do a big sale. But if you do that and you sell too quick, you might just be completely out of stock for a while. So what is what's your your thought process behind what you're doing going into the fourth quarter? If I told you how much time our team, our accounting team and our management team are putting into analytics of thinking about, okay, well, what can we afford to sell? Uh, what are we going to run out of? How do we re- get replenishment? If we have to run out of something, when do we want to run out? Right? Um, mm-hmm. Are we willing to run out before the holidays? Are we willing to be out of stock on something January second? Uh, what else can we do? Uh, and it, it it affects what the marketing people are trying to think about. Um, you know, it, it's it's very complicated. I mean, we we have lowered our estimate of what we uh, had expected to do for 2021 um, uh, by a couple million bucks because of the ability to get the stuff. You can't get it. Now, the good news is all things pass. You know, I've been through things, ups and downs. And if you aren't able to pivot, morph, modify, change, um, uh, you're not going to succeed. You know, I let my teams run hard because they're all smart people. But I'm really good at dealing with insurmountable problems. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's what I tell. That's what I tell my teams to bring me. You solve the. You know, don't even tell me the good news. That's fine. It all takes care of itself. But when you got a problem that's impossible, you know, what do you do? Do you go under it, over it, around it, through it, or do you simply go? Let's go in a different direction. This isn't mm-hmm. going to. work. I have two words that describe that: fail fast. So with that right. said, we aren't we aren't failing, right? I will say <laughs> we also we also had the foresight back in May to understand once we started seeing what was going on with the bully sticks um, that we needed to quickly bring on some additional products that fit our product lineup that mm-hmm. um, you know met our brand messaging and what we believe in and what our mission is. So we actually. Again, here's one of those good times when you pivot and you end up expanding in in a really nice way. We ended up bringing on um, a natural chew line. So we now have three new single ingredient products that we wouldn't have had otherwise if COVID wasn't happening. And if we weren't thinking about what are we going to do how are we going to have enough product for Christmas and or the holidays or for Halloween, whatever you want to look at. And so what we've done from a marketing standpoint is we've now taken those products and we are we're creating new packages. So we're having holiday boxes. We're having, you know, howl o treat boxes that we're going to be offering. So, 
you know, we're trying to do things a little bit differently and expand um, our audience because of this, right? So we, I don't think we're going to run out. We bought really well because we had that foresight to do so. Um, mm-hmm. And Michael's basically threatened us that we're not allowed to run out. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're not going to run out, Andrew. <laughs> Good for everyone listening. They're not running out. So go buy them. <laughs> uh, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I really appreciate having you two on the show. This is that stereotypical moment where you guys tell everyone where they can learn more about yourselves and more about Bow Wow Labs. So bowwowlabs.com, that's www.bowwowlabs.com. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Bow Wow Labs. And Michael, you get to wrap it up. And, and, and you'll find that it, uh, our products are in the very best independent pet stores uh, around the country, including Fetch RI in Rhode Island. Thank you. Nice. Heard, I love that final plug. Well done. <laughs> Of course, Donna, Michael, really appreciate having you guys on the show and everyone who tuned in. Thank you so much for listening. Please make sure to subscribe on any podcast platform that you feel you would like to or tune in to our YouTube channel and head over to ecomshow.com to hear all of our episodes. But if not, per usual, keep on selling and we will see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Ecom Show. Head over to ecomshow.com to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform or on the Blue Tusker YouTube channel. The Ecom Show is brought to you by Blue Tusker, a full-service digital marketing company specifically for e-commerce sellers looking to accelerate their growth. Go to bluetusker.com now for more information. Make sure to tune in next week for another amazing episode of The Ecom Show.